talk about the potential for some wintry weather in the forecast that we have that we've been talking about for the last few days coming up for Tuesday already seeing some winter weather advisories. We do have winter storm watches in effect for parts of Northwest Arkansas as early as Tuesday afternoon into the overnight hour. So that's something we'll be talking about in just a bit. But here's the latest of what we're seeing on our radar. We saw a little bit some light drizzle, light rain showers that are making its way on out. Even a few flakes over in parts of Northwest Arkansas. Here's a look at what we're seeing right now. Temperatures in the mid 40s, cloudy skies. We'll see some partial clearing as we go into the overnight hours. It's going to be a little bit chilly as we see temperatures drop into the mid 30s. A beautiful forecast in store for our Monday. We get to enjoy plenty of sunshine highs nearing the low 50s. But yeah, all that up until Tuesday when we see the return of that wintry weather in our forecast. So I'll have more details on that and the latest on your snowfall forecast as well. Just ahead. All right, thank you, Corellis. Now we do have some additional sad news tonight in the Benton community. This afternoon, we learned that Benton fireman Tristan Red was sadly killed in a car crash this weekend. Tonight, friends, colleagues and fellow first responders are remembering Tristan just days after he celebrated his two year anniversary with the fire department. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all who knew him. Over in North Little Rock, police are investigating an overnight homicide. Authorities tell us that they were called to a burglary alarm at a home near the area of 27th and Lakeview in North Little Rock. When they arrived, they found a person on scene suffering from a gunshot wound. The unnamed victim did die at the scene. We do know that officers took a suspect into custody, but police have not shared any details on charges or what happened. We'll provide any updates we can on this story as they come in at T hv11.com. Authorities in Monterey Park, California are desperately searching for a possible suspect they described as an Asian male in a mass shooting that left 10 people dead and about 10 injured at a dance hall in the city east of Los Angeles. Donya Bacchus is in Monterey Park right now with the latest. Monterey Park is in mourning after deadly violence shocked this Southern California community as it celebrated the Lunar New Year. When the fire department did get into the business, they did pronounce 10 of the victims deceased at the scene. Authorities say a gunman who killed those 10 people at the Star Dance Studio may have tried and failed to unleash more deadly violence at a second dance hall in nearby Alhambra. Authorities say it remains unclear whether the events are connected, but the killer who left five women and five men dead was still not caught by well into Sunday. Was he by himself? Were there other suspects? We, our detectives, are looking at uh, every angle. Our job is to collect every shred of this awful puzzle that has been laid out by this suspect. On Sunday, authorities released this photo of a man they want to speak with in connection with the tragedy. And south of Los Angeles, in the city of Torrance, they surrounded this white van where they were checking on the identity of someone inside. This community of about 60,000 east of Los Angeles is comprised mostly of people of Asian descent. To hear about this uh, was just absolutely shattering, uh, especially in our peaceful community, which uh, I believe is so uh, resilient and which appreciates its diversity. Now, instead of celebrating the Chinese year of the rabbit, residents here are searching for answers. Donya back is CBS News, Monterey Park, California. Turning now to Washington, we first told you last night that more classified documents have been found at President Joe Biden's home in Delaware. Tonight, we are learning that federal authorities seized notes Biden had personally written as vice president too. According to Biden's personal lawyer, the Department of Justice says it found six more classified documents on Friday during a search that lasted nearly 13 hours at Biden's Wilmington home. Some of the classified documents dated from Biden's time in the Senate, others from his time as vice president. Tax filing season kicks off tomorrow, and before you start the process, experts want you to keep a few things in mind. The process can be stressful and at times confusing, which is why experts say it's important to be prepared with everything you need and do not rush to file. If you hurry up and file, you may not receive all of your forms, and that could cause a processing delay with your return, and it'll take you longer to receive your refund. Tonight at 10, we'll have more details on what you need to know and why your refund might be less than what it was last year.
Now, if you've checked your mailbox or email today, you may have gotten your W-2, and that does mean that it's tax time. So the IRS will officially begin accepting those returns on Monday. You might want to start thinking about booking that appointment with your tax preparer. Again, at 10, we'll have all of that information. You have until April 18th to file. The deadline was extended this year beyond the April 15th deadline due to a federal holiday. Even through the rain, pro-life advocates continued their march for life in central Arkansas today. Pro-life advocates walked from State Street to the steps of the state capitol. The march this year falls on the 50th anniversary of the original Roe v. Wade decision that gave the constitutional right to an abortion. However, that decision was overturned this past summer. Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee and other public figures were there as well. Another manufacturing company in Pine Bluff is getting creative to recruit future employees. Central Maloney is partnering with a school district there in an effort to train students to become welders for free. Tonight, THV 11's Frederick Price shows us how this benefits the workforce in Pine Bluff. One of the deepest needs in terms of skilled labor that we've got is, is as a welder. But Chris Hart, the CEO of Central Maloney, a transformer manufacturing company, says that isn't always easy to find. Our turnover is through the roof. We're doing everything we can to combat that. Part of accomplishing this, he says, is building a pipeline for those interested. Beginning this year, the company decided to partner with Watson Chapel in Pine Bluff. We will be glad to put our money out up front and invest in the students that are one day going to become the labor force here. And it all starts here inside the Wildcat Welding Academy. So far, 19 students are enrolled in the program, and Central Maloney invested $200,000 to transform this classroom for students willing to learn. These students are learning all the styles and methods of welding spending at least six weeks going over safety practices and using scrap material from the plant to make things like this grill. But Hart says the students are also picking up transferable skills that contributes to any manufacturing environment. You gotta be at work on time every day. You gotta be willing to learn, take a little bit of instruction. Responsible for that is Curtis Marks. I wanna instill in these guys that once you graduate, it's the real world outside of there. He works for the company and became certified to teach. Marks found his passion for this career when he was just a teen, much like the students he instructs. 90% of these guys had never touched a welder. Hard to believe judging by their work, but it's why Marks is so passionate about exposing students to something outside the traditional curriculum. No matter whether it's welding, plumbing, electrical work, you always try to do your best. Opening doors for students who are ready to join the workforce in Jefferson County. And Pine Bluff, Frederick Price, THV 11 News. Other schools in southeast Arkansas are now also expressing interest. Hart says money is being sent to Dumas, Stuckart, and Cleveland County to create similar programs in those school districts. Still ahead tonight, both former President Trump and President Biden are under scrutiny for mishandling classified documents. In just three minutes, our National Verify team looks into who has the power to declassify a document. But first, we're going to do a quick check-in with the forecast with Corrales Ortiz. Corrales, we've seen some rain kind of on and off. Are we going to have a rainy start to the week? No, we have a much better forecast in store for our Monday, but we quickly change things up by Tuesday as we're awaiting the arrival of winter storm coming our way. I'll have the latest details in the snowfall amounts we could expect and any impacts we may see as well coming up.